Hello, this is Claude and uh, today I'm uh, making a video about a repair for the uh, drop uh, shift keyboard and uh, the issue that I have with my keyboard is the drop shift comes as you can see here with two inputs for the USB uh, and uh, if you have one of the two that dies I'm gonna uh, you know troubleshoot it and, and sh well, show I troubleshot uh, my keyboard the parts that I got and I will do the repair um, if uh, this is the PCB, obviously you need to take the PCB out of the uh, keyboard and remove the uh, the keycaps, remove the uh, key switches, then get to the um, to the PCB. And here is the side that is dead, basically. So that side is dead. And if I go on the other side, as you will see, as you saw already, it's working just fine, right? So um, this is good. So the board is okay. So um, what I will show you, well, first of all, I will show you this is the the mass drop keyboard uh, for the uh, keyboard uh, PCB for the drop shift keyboard. All right. So um, let's see. So I'm going to show a little bit. I'm going to try to go a little bit closer and show what the issue is. All right. So uh, by so this is the uh, the top part where you got the uh, where you insert all the uh, the key um, um, the switches the keyboard switches right and here are is on the other side where all the uh, the components are so uh, the one side that works is this one and then the one side that is dead is that one. This one right here, right? The left side. So if you go, and I'm going to go even closer. So it might be a little shaky, but if you go here, what you will see is that you will see, uh, if you look at the traces that go, usually there's a, a protection uh, for power protection, right? So usually, so if I look on the, whoops, sorry about that. If I go on the other side, it's easier to see. On the other side, near, uh, you've got here, you've got some uh, resistors. Uh, right here, I got the little diode over there, I tested them, and then you've got this uh, diode over here. And this diode, uh, usually it's near, the protection is really near, so you look at the devices here, right? So there's, this is, there is one set over here, uh, and this is the component that I was able to find. I searched it, and I was looking at it, and I could see that the, uh, with my multimeter tool, I didn't get the same, uh, uh, you know, measurements from one to the other on the other side. And voila. All right, so this is the component, uh, the faulty component right here, right? So with that WR1, oh, you see it right here, WR1 marking on it with 95 sideways. Let me see here if I can show that here. This right here is the component that we are going to switch. And I'm going to show, um, and I'm going to back out a little bit. Come back out a little bit. There you go. There you go. Uh, so I'm going to show you. So this is the component I got from uh, Mouser, and this is the part number right here: seven seventy one dash prtr five v zero u two x dash t slash r. I'm going to show you the screenshot on uh, Mouser. There you go. So this is the component right here. All right. Uh, and if I go into the uh, uh, the data sheet it says exactly what it does um, rail to rail electrostatic discharge protection diode uh, so exactly what it is and I'm going to show you more or less uh, the diagram exactly on the um, on the PCB so it goes into the uh, it will take the information the data will protect will go in that this is why I have rear on this, when I connect it to, my, to a tool, it gives me plus three volts on the D minus, and it should give me zero. All right, so that is one of the issues that I have. So obviously it goes, and then this is here, it's got protection here, it's got protection on the D minus. Uh, so here probably means that something is busted, and then there's a three volts going through, which it shouldn't, all right? So uh, I'm going to uh, start the repair and go from there. Plugs on that baby. You're gonna probably see my head, but it's uh...
Rush. Okay. So that was it. Let me see if I've got the Just to make sure, so that side, that side was fine. Then I'm recording. That side was working. That's fine. That side was not working. Let's see what happens. Repair done. All right. So um, well, we're good to go. We're back in business, baby. So uh, that repair is basically done. Um. Actually, it took me about five minutes. I was struggling with the little component and all of that, but uh, it's a five-minute repair. So um, it's done, and uh, I'm going to reassemble the whole thing and uh, do the final test, all right? Point eight D minus point zero three. I had three volts. I had three volts. That's why it wasn't working. About five volts. That's fine. Two point eight point zero three. That's correct. I had three volts, so that was wrong. All right. So that's good. Fixed. Overall, the repair took me about, uh, the repair itself, five minutes. The longest step was to do the troubleshooting, obviously. Well, not even that. Removing the, the, the key caps, the, the, the key switches, and you know, uh, you know, freeing up the PCB and putting it back up was longer than the troubleshooting and actually the repair itself. So uh, if one of your ports is dead on the control, the drop, the alt, or the shift, uh, that's probably going to be the same issue. Uh, it's probably this uh, this uh, ESD protection uh, diode that needs to be replaced and uh, you don't need to have a hot air uh, a tool if you have just uh, using the uh, some flux and uh, some uh, you know some wicking uh, material uh, solder wick then that's just fine you don't need to have the expensive tool so that and probably everyone can do that repair so hope that was useful and see you in the next video thank you for watching see you in the next one bye bye